Well, good morning, Christian Family Church. Praise the Lord. Surprise. I know you may have been expecting Apostle Theo, but it's me today, or Pastor Bev, should I say. Um, last week, Apostle Theo told us that Pastor Bev had contracted COVID, but I'm glad to report she's strong, fit and healthy, recovering, full of the joy of the Lord. And um, we'll be hearing from Pastor Bev pretty soon. I want to thank them both for this opportunity that I have this morning of teaching the Word of God. The title of my message today is How to Keep It Together in a World That is Falling Apart. And I'm going to ask you to pray with me this morning as we present, as I present this word, trusting that God will stir our hearts, encourage us, and prepare us for what lies ahead. So, Father, we come before you this morning in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus. After a wonderful time of worship, we come to spend time in your word. Your word prunes us, prepares us, strengthens us, encourages us. And so we celebrate it this morning. Father, I thank you for the privilege that I have of teaching. I thank you for your anointing upon my life as the teacher. And I pray today that your family will be blessed in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus. And all those who agreed said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, again, welcome. And I'm really looking forward to my series today. I'm teaching this morning and I'm going to be teaching this evening. It is vitally important that you attend or watch both of these services in order to get the full message that I believe the Lord wants to deliver through me today. Can you imagine experiencing some sort of heart palpitations, maybe a bit of lethargy, weakness, and you go to the doctor, you organize a consultation, and the heart surgeon looks at you, and after taking a look at your results, says to you, listen, you've got a hole in your heart. Next. Imagine being in that environment where he's diagnosed. Can you imagine the fear that would grip you, the wondering, am I going to survive? How long do I have left to live? And he wants to move on to the next patient. You see, with every diagnosis, you also need a remedy. You also need a course of action. And so this morning's message is going to be focusing on diagnosing the problem from the Word of God this morning. And then the latter part of this morning and tonight, I'm going to be focusing on the solutions, essentially how to keep it together. If you only watch this morning's meeting, it's almost like being left on the operating table, being opened up without being stitched closed. One of Pastor Theo's favorite analogies. So let's get cracking. You know, folks, I've been blessed to be able to travel all around the world over the past 25 years of ministry. Oh, by the way, myself, Pastor Christine, Pastor Greg and Tracy are celebrating this week our 25th year in full-time ministry with Apostle Theo and Pastor Bev. And in those 25 years, I've been privileged to travel around the world, different nations from Cuba to India. And one thing I have noticed, and that is this, that the world is in a progressive decline. The scientific term for that is it's entropic. It's winding down. Politicians cannot control it. How many of you have noticed that? Science has no remedy for it. Education and knowledge only seem to make things worse. The more knowledge we gain on certain aspects, it almost seems like the worse the world is becoming. Now, I could spend a lot of time I could spend a lot of time speaking about what's wrong with the world, but I don't want to do that. We all know that. But I want to really just draw from Scripture in order to create context to see that the Word of God has all the solutions. The Lord foresaw this happening, and He provided a way out for us, His church for us as Christians. And that really is what I'd like to focus on. However, if we turn to Luke chapter 17, verses 26 to 30, I'd just like to mention briefly in passing some passages that speak about the age that we currently find ourselves in. In Luke chapter 17, I'm going to be focusing on verse 26 and verse 28 specifically. It reads as follows. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be. You want to underline will be in your Bible. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will also be in the days of the Son of Man. Then to verse 28, it says, Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot. Verse 30, Even so, it will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So over here, Jesus tells us about two eras or two times that are going to be repeated in the time that we currently live in. Now, there are five features that stand out for us regarding the time of Noah 
and the time of Lot. And I feel these five features are just as relevant for us today as what they were back then. And if you haven't read about what those days were like recently, I suggest that you go back and read them. If you're following your Bible through the year, you'll be, you should be hitting around about the time of the great flood. And you'll notice that number one in both of these generations, that the human race was infiltrated by the kingdom of Satan and his demons. In both of these generations, we were infiltrated or they were infiltrated. And I believe the same is true today. The second feature is that every thought of man's heart was evil. In actual fact, in the times of Noah, God said to Noah, I've regretted that I actually made man. Can you imagine humanity being in such a desperate state that God actually regrets creating them? So every thought of man's heart was evil because of all the demonic influences around them. And let me just say this, that just like a demon can influence someone to do something anti-Christ and against God, so we have angels that influence, influence us for the good. And there's two angels to every one demon. So we're in a very strong position. And let me say, this message is meant to encourage you. I know you're reading and you're watching and thinking, oh God, where's Pastor Andre going with us? I promise you, it's good news. So just, just stick with me, okay? The third thing is that the earth was filled with violence, both in Noah's time and in Lot's time. The earth was filled with violence. Just take a look at what's happening on the news. We've become a very violent earth. Fourthly, sexual perversion was rampant. But not only was sexual perversion rampant, the deviants became so blatantly aggressive that they wanted to impose their deviance on the societies that they lived in. Accept us, be like us, or else we cancel you. The fifth thing, and this is a biggie, that materialism in these two cultures distracted them greatly from what God was about to do. They were so focused on what was happening around them that they didn't even realize the desperate place that they were in. And I think today's world is exactly the same. Everybody wants the latest and the greatest. Material things have become a priority. And I've been noticing on social media how many people, well-intentioned people, are saying we need to pray. The church needs to rise up and pray against this onslaught of wickedness. We need to push back the antichrist spirit. And there's nothing wrong with that. My question is, what is your motive for praying that prayer? The Bible tells us in the book of James that we do not receive because we ask for the wrong motives, that we may spend it on ourselves. And we need to be careful that when we're praying against pushing back darkness, that it's not so that we can stay comfortable in our homes, driving our cars with our kids at school. But does the kingdom of God, the primary reason and the motivation for our intention behind our prayers, that's the kind of prayer that God will answer. We have to check our motive, make sure that we're not afraid of losing everything that we've racked up materialistically over the last few generations, our paid off house that might be repossessed and reclaimed and yada, 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 bling, bling. So these five features, the human race was infiltrated by the kingdom of Satan, evil thoughts were in men's heart continually, the earth was filled with violence, sexual perversion was rampant and materialism was there and we can notice that likewise it is today. Now in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus is speaking about the labor pains that that the people who live in the last generation before the coming of the Lord are going to experience. And this is what he says in Matthew 24 and verse seven. He says this, that in our generation, in this time right now, that nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Nation against nation. The interesting Greek word for the word nation over there is ethnos. Ethnos, from where we get the word ethnic from. So here what Jesus is actually telling us, he's saying, guys, in the last days, one of the greatest and most significant birth pangs of the latter generation is going to be that ethnic groups are going to rise against ethnic groups. Racial tension is gonna be on the rise. Everything, and we can see that happening quite plainly. Jesus knew about this thousands of years ago. And then he goes on to say, and kingdom against kingdom. And I'll be teaching a bit more about that 
a bit later on. So I really believe that ethnic conflict is gonna be one of the greatest labor pains of our generation. 2 Timothy chapter three, verses one through five. Now I'm not gonna read all the way through verses one through five for the sake of time. I just wanna highlight some very significant things. Here Paul says to Timothy, he says, but know this, you wanna underline that. Not think about it, not perhaps, he says, but know this. He's saying be emphatic about it. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Perilous times will come. Do you know the word perilous is only used on two other occasions in the New Testament Greek? And that is when the demoniacs were coming out of the cave to attack Jesus. A more accurate translation of this word perilous is actually exceedingly fierce. Exceedingly fierce. Don't switch off the stream and go somewhere else. I promise you this is good news. You tell me, Pastor Andre, ethnic conflict, exceedingly fierce times. I don't wanna hear this. We need to hear this, folks. It's in the Bible. But the good news is the Lord has given us a way out and I'm going to get to that. So he says, but know this, that in the last days, exceedingly fierce times, exceedingly fierce times are going to come. He goes on to say, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. And then at the end of verse five, he says, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. In actual fact, the Bible tells us that there are 18 specific things in the scripture in 2 Timothy 3 verses one through five that are going to take place. I've just highlighted three. But one thing I want you to notice is that all of these things are conspicuous. They can be seen. Lovers of self, lovers of money, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And Paul goes on to tell us why this is happening. And he says it's because of the corruption of human nature. The corruption of human nature. As I've read my Bible, I've noticed one thing, that corruption is irreversible. Let me give you an example. I really love clean peaches. Nice, beautiful, orange, ripe, clean peach. But there's a time where that peach just begins to turn and it begins to break down and it begins to get rotten. There's nothing you can do to reverse that rottenness. You can perhaps put it in the fridge for a little while and it'll slow that corruption down, but it is irreversible. And this is why the Bible says that Jesus came not to make good, bad people good, but he came to make dead people alive. The human nature cannot be fixed outside of Christ. So everything that is outside of Christ is gonna progressively become more and more corrupt. Many religious churches act like refrigerators in the sense that people go there and it kind of slows down the process. But without being born again, let me tell you, corruption is on its way. And with the world not knowing Christ, that is exactly where we find ourselves. We find ourselves living in a world that's like a cling peach that's gone bad. I hope you're getting the analogy. You can, sorry, let me find my place. So of the 18 features that Paul mentions, the first two and the last one, I think, so perfectly describe this age that we live in. Lovers of self, lovers of money, and at the end, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Of these three, I think the key phrase has to be the love of self. It is the greatest cause of breakdown in societies, love of self. In actual fact, it causes marriages, families, and societies to break down. And when we begin to love ourselves more than anyone around us, the following takes place. Number one, there is a breakdown in the family unit. The family is under attack on a global scale. There is a breakdown in society. When you have a breakdown in families, you have a breakdown in society. Then eventually you have anarchy which we've seen a lot of in the last few years. And finally, you get tyranny or despotism 
or a dictatorship. Now, this should not surprise us because the Bible says in the end times, this is leading directly towards an ultimate dictatorship under the Antichrist and the false prophet. That's where we're going. The Bible clearly outlines it. That's where we are headed. But thank God, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. You see, if this pandemic has taught us anything, it should be that we are closer to the end of the age of the church than what we ever were before. Perhaps we're not even as prepared as what we thought we were. And I say this as a pastor, speaking to many people that I know who are believers, that are living in constant fear about what's gonna happen in the future. Folks, let me say this, there isn't a single person alive today that we can run to, and I'm talking about in the physical, that we can run to for solutions because no one has lived through a global pandemic the way we're living through it today. There's not a single person, and I notice people are running to prophetic words to see what's gonna happen. Listen, there's only one person that knows what's happening, and that's God himself. And it is incumbent upon us as believers to read the Bible and just do what Jesus is telling you to do because what he's telling you to do may not be what he's telling anybody else to do. Go read John chapter Two, Mary said to the servants, do whatever he tells you, not anyone else. Everyone else was complaining, the wine is finished. Oh, what are we gonna do now? From now on, the party's over. She just simply said, do what he tells you to do. And my encouragement to you today is this, that Jesus is waiting for you to seek his face because he's got solutions for you and for your family. He's never left us nor forsaken us. He never will leave us and he never will forsake us as long as our eyes are fixed on Jesus. Now you could argue and say to me, Pastor Andre, but they've been telling me this, that for a long time that Jesus is gonna come. There are periods in history where things were really bad and people prophesied that the coming of the Lord and look here, we still are today. But folks, let me say this. There is one thing that stands out in this generation that has never ever taken place before, which I believe indicates that we are in the last of the last days. You see, I believe the Jews are God's minute hand on the clock. So how do I know that what I'm teaching you today, how do I know that this is relevant to our generation? Well, look at what it says in Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse three. This is what the Bible says. For behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will bring back from captivity my people Israel and Judah, says the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers and they shall possess it. The Lord says in the last of the last days, he's gonna start bringing back everyone back to Jerusalem. And we know since Israel became a nation in 1948, that is exactly what's been happening. It didn't happen during the time of Noah. It didn't happen during the time of Lot or any other generation, but it's happening now, folks. So I believe firmly that we are in the last of the last days. So much has changed in our world. I'm 49 years old, turning 50 in July this year. And in my relatively brief 49 years, I'm amazed at how the world has become progressively more corrupt. There was not nearly as much political upheaval when I was young. And I can imagine if you're watching this and you're 60 and 70 years old, I mean, the first words in your mouth in the morning after you've praised the Lord is saying to yourself, how did I get here? How did the world get to this? There was not nearly as much political upheaval on a global scale I'm talking about. Blatant corruption and lawlessness and rebellion were not nearly as rampant as what they are today. When I was younger, the police could be trusted and I think majority of them still can, but I'm just talking about globally now. You just watch TV and you find out that many times the police are the very drivers behind behind organized crime. Things are winding down. Service delivery was excellent and you got what you paid for. The systems we had in place worked. In contrast, however, our young people today, and let me just say that for, say this for a moment, and if you're young, I need you listening to this right now because I can't imagine not having Jesus and being 15 years old, 15 to 25, wondering what does my future hold with an employment, unemployment the way it is right now and the world in its, in its current state What do you do? You study, you don't get a position. So uh, my heart really goes out 
to young people today. I've got two daughters and I know what it's like trying to get out there, be productive and just make a living. When I was young, it was easy. Jobs were a dime a dozen. And so specifically, you need to hear me today. If you're feeling hopeless and you don't know what the future holds, I'm telling you, listen to me, you have a future in Jesus. Listen to me, as sure as God created the heavens and the earth, or Pastor Theo says, God made green little apples, God has got a good future in store for you, one that glorifies Him, not glorifies you. If you're looking for a future that's gonna glorify you, me, 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 I, I, the Lord is not in that. But God has got something earmarked, created specifically for you, a place that is prepared for you. This is the God that I serve. And so listen to me, young people today, carefully meditate on the scriptures I'm about to give you and make sure that you obey. And I promise you, your future is bright. I believe the future is bright for every single believer. I believe God fought the battle. He won it. The devil and the enemy is under our feet. But sometimes we take our eyes off that as we notice, this, the, 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 as we notice what's going on around us. Our eyes shift from the kingdom of God to the kingdom of God. Of Satan. I believe that there is something that young people can anchor their hope to. I believe there is someone you can run to. I told you already, there's no one in the world that has been through this that you can go seek counsel from, but God alone. And I believe what this is, is the counsel of God. The counsel of God. You see, the Lord has lived through this. In actual fact, since the beginning of time, God has already lived through 2021. The year we're in, God has already lived this. He is eternal. He is omnipresent, omniscient, and omniscient, and om omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent. He's lived through 2021. He's the one that we can trust to say, Lord, how do we deal with this year? Amen? So I believe that that is the counsel of God. As I mentioned before, in the truest sense of the word, I believe God wants every single Christian to be a success. And I'm not talking about superficial success. In the sense of being conspicuously wealthy or even highly educated. I do believe that every child born of God has greatness and success prepared for them by God himself, regardless of the generation you find yourself in or the situation that you find yourself in. The only thing we can run to, and I use the word thing loosely, the only thing, the only place we can go to is the Word of God. God's Word is our only choice. You're going to have to follow the counsel of God's Word because this world and its systems clearly are falling apart. Now regarding this subject, let me say this, that there is nothing new that can be said or added to what the Bible has already said about the times that we live in. The Word of God, the counsel of God holds all the solutions. And as I've traveled from India to Cuba, I've realized to Uganda, I've realized that the Word of God is eternally relevant in every culture, on every continent, and to every type of person. It is the only book that is relevant to everyone. So we can go to it as a sure, trusted source of solutions. So nothing can be added. And what I want to attempt to do today simply is this. We know what the problem is. We've seen it. Extract scriptures from the Word of God that direct us to the solution. So we've seen now, as I mentioned earlier on in my analogy, listen, we've got a problem. There's a hole in your heart. But hey, listen, we can fix it. God can fix it. And that's what I'm going to be focusing on for the rest of the message today and this evening. Number one, what do we do? What do we do? How do we keep it together in a world that is falling apart? Number one, we must trust the counsel of God. Who are you getting your counsel from currently? Secular thinkers, YouTube, Facebook. Do you spend more time on the news than you do on the good news? That's a big problem. Are you getting it from secular thinkers? Are you sitting in groups of friends, many of them not born again, and talking to them about what the future holds? Let me tell you now, they don't know. Are you going to science? 
Are you looking at some form of higher education? You see folks, during this time, we cannot rely on human wisdom. It is limited in every single respect. There are sinister forces at work behind the leaders of this world that are trying to channel us into a place of, of subservience to the kingdom of this world. Most of the people don't even know what they're doing. Intentionally is wicked. They are like puppets serving their master, which is the devil. So that every human, it's limited. There is one, there is only one reliable source of guidance, and that is the Bible. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Psalm chapter one and verse one. And look at what this Psalm, look at the, the wisdom it holds for us during this time. It says, blessed or empowered to prosper is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Social media streams are not driven by people who are inspired by the Holy Ghost. You trust no one except the Bible and God. And it says, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits at the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Listen to this promise. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And I really pray the word is doing the work right now in you. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Now we know water in Ephesians refers to the word. So here the metaphor has been drawn by the psalmist that a man who's in the word is like a tree that's planted right next to the water who brings forth fruit, listen to this, in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. When you're planted and rooted in the word, everything may be collapsing around you. The trees that are planted away from the water will shrivel up and die in a time of drought. But God says, not only will you survive in the off seasons, but you will thrive. You will be able to bear fruit. I believe that God wants every believer during this time to, he's positioned us as long as we're in the word to be able to bear fruit regardless of the circumstances or the season that we find ourselves in. Can someone say amen, click like, praise the Lord or whatever that you do on the stream below. So that's the first thing, trust the counsel of God. The second thing is that we have to align our lives with God's priorities. Align our, align our lives with God's priorities. In essence, make God's priorities your priorities. In Matthew chapter six, the disciples come to Jesus and they say, Lord, teach us how to pray. And so the Lord Jesus gave us a prayer, not only for them, but for us as well, and begins to teach them. And we know the prayer starts with, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. But what I noticed for the first time in preparing this message, that the first petition that is made in the Lord's Prayer that's given to us by God Himself is this. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our first petition in the Lord's Prayer after worshiping the Lord should say, Father, your kingdom come. And remember I told you alone when we read that scripture that nation in Matthew will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So here we see in this verse that God's priority is revealed through the second statement, which is the first petition. And that is your kingdom come. Folks, let me tell you today, if you wanna be unshaken and immovable during this time, we have to make sure that God's priority is our priority and that the kingdom of God remains our focus. In actual fact, if the kingdom of God is not our focus right now, God's kingdom, which means God's way of doing things. If God's way of doing things are not our priority and not our focus at this time, we're in trouble and we shouldn't be praying the Lord's prayer. We'd be hypocrites if we, if we really don't want God's kingdom to come, if our eyes are on the kingdoms of this world, the systems of this world. It needs to be our first priority. You know, folks, earth has no other hope. 
other than that prayer. Earth has no other hope. And if politicians could help us, don't you think they would have done it by now? Don't you think they would have fixed some stuff by now? We love them as people, but listen, politics is part of the problem. The Lord told us, you want a king, you're gonna have problems, they're gonna tax you. It's just one of those things. Now go with me to Hebrews chapter 12. I'm gonna read from verses 25 through to 28. And I want you to let the word speak to you right now. Listen to this. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on the earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Verse 26. Whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised saying, yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Verse 27. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that have been shaken, as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. I'll repeat that, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Verse 28, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot, hallelujah, since we are receiving a kingdom, the very kingdom that Jesus said we are to pray, thy kingdom come, which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Folks, let me tell you, the reason for God permitting a worldwide shaking in politics, in finance, in our markets, in medicine, in our families, and even in the church, according to Hebrews, is in order to reveal to the entire earth those things which are fickle, that cannot be depended upon, but that the kingdom of God is established. It will always be there, has always been there through Christ and is made available to us. I want to close off this morning's service, this morning session. You've got to be back tonight. I'm only... I'm a quarter of the way through. You must come back tonight. But these closing thoughts in Hebrews are so encouraging because the Lord says, listen, I've permitted this. I've spoken. I've put out my voice and there is coming a time where everything is gonna be shaken, where everything you knew to be true, that the kingdoms of this world had established in order to transact, in order to live, I'm gonna allow it to be shaken. Why? because I need the world to know and I need the church to know that there is one kingdom that will never, ever, ever be shaken. And if you are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, let me tell you, you're not going anywhere but up. Can someone say, praise the Lord. I'm gonna continue with that verse tonight, please. I know many of you only watch one service on a weekend, but you really don't, don't leave yourselves open. Come back tonight, I'm gonna continue this. It's all good news from here on out, by the way. It's all good news. So you're gonna be thoroughly, thoroughly blessed if you come back this evening. God bless you. Every head bowed and every eye closed. You may be watching this for the very first time and saying, gee, Pastor Andre, that's a very ominous situation I find myself in. Uh, how am I gonna get through this? How am I gonna survive? Well, let me tell you, Jesus is the answer. But the very first step you need to take, the very first step that you need to take is to receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You see, he has established an eternal kingdom. God the Father has established an eternal kingdom. But in order to become a citizen of that kingdom, you need to accept His Son, Jesus Christ. Why do I need to accept Jesus? Well, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Everyone has sinned. And to be a, king, a child in the kingdom, a citizen of the kingdom, you need your sins forgiven. You need your sins forgiven. Lepers were not invited and not allowed to fellowship with people back then. Leprosy was a type of sin. They were outcasts. They were put out of the community. But whenever they were healed through Jesus Christ, they were welcomed back in. For all have sinned. Every single one of us had leprosy at one point in time. And when you come to Jesus, you say, Father, forgive me of my sin. I know I'm a sinner. I have Leprosy, please heal me and forgive me so that I can step into your kingdom. I wanna pray with you quickly while every head is bowed and every eye is closed. Say this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, 
I come to you this morning in the name of Jesus. I am a sinner. I've missed your mark for my life. I've missed your mark for my life. Please forgive me. Lord Jesus, I know that you died for me. And after three days, you rose again. Come into my heart. I make you the Lord of my life. I promise to love you and to serve you until the day I see you face to face. Thank you now for welcoming me into your kingdom. Thank you that I sense your love, that I sense your forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus, for keeping me. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Now, if you did get saved and received Jesus and prayed that prayer with me, won't you please text SAVED to 4991. We're big on next steps here at Christian Family Church and we want to help you take your next step in Jesus. Now, listen, folks, tonight, before we close off, tonight, I'm going to be speaking about, let me get to this, type, this heading. There is only one type of person that will not be shaken during this current age. There's only one type of person that will not be shaken. I'm gonna be giving you a whole lot of scripture and some revelation that I really believe you may never have heard before that is gonna have you swinging from the chandeliers. And if you don't have one, you're gonna fit one in your house so you can swing from it, praise the Lord. God bless you, everybody. Hey, don't forget, tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., we're praying 21 days of prayer, 8 o'clock every morning. The pastors are gonna be leading us in prayer together. It's been wonderful so far every single morning. If you haven't joined, you really need to join and share that with everybody else. Anyway, folks, God bless you until tonight, 5 p.m. Please don't miss out on praise and worship. We're gonna have a great time in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, praise and worship. Team. Let's worship Lord. Thank you for watching the Christian Family Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join our online community and join us live every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream and share this with your friends. Thank you again for watching and God bless you.